So a lot of you have been asking what happened with Lonnie. Why is he in the ICU? So I decided to make a quick video. Now I'm not going to edit this a whole bunch so I may be rambly. I am putting ads on this video but only because guys I'm not working. I'm not working. I don't know when I'm going to be able to go back to work. Not until probably 2023. So unfortunately I still have to pay bills. So please know I'm not doing it to be insensitive. And before things really took a downward turn with Lonnie Jr. I asked him if he was okay with me talking about things that happen because I feel like other parents need to definitely be more aware of this and he said he was okay with it as long as he wasn't shown on camera which I wouldn't do anyway so he's not going to be shown on camera but he was okay with me talking about it. On October 21st Lonnie Jr. got his wisdom teeth removed because one of them was impacted. He did amazing with recovery the first like four or five days he didn't even need pain meds he was doing so good but on day five he started to have some random pain i was concerned it was dry socket so i took him to the dentist they're like it might be dry socket it might be infection we don't know we don't want to prescribe antibiotics if we don't know that it's that so just kind of write it out and come back if you have any issues Lonnie Jr. is literally my kid that has the best pain tolerance ever. So if he's saying something's painful, guys, it is like five times what someone can handle. He's also a kid that downplays things a lot because he doesn't like to be an inconvenience to other people. So when he started to complain a few days later at 2 a.m. that his teeth were like his mouth was still hurting, I was like, we're going back to the dentist, like something's going on. So we went back to the dentist. They said at this point it was most likely dry socket and we just needed to write it through. So that's kind of what we did. But during this time, Lonnie Jr. had started to get like a cough cold and this just seemed like a normal thing. Weather was changing and he's always been very sensitive to like allergies and weather changing. So I didn't think anything of it. Again, he really downplayed it. Like one day he'd be like, yeah, I'm going to school, not a problem. And then the next day he wouldn't be. I assumed that it was just a little bit of a cold. And at points, he said he seemed like he was getting better. Last week, he still wasn't feeling good. So I made Lonnie Jr. an appointment. Lonnie took him Friday morning to the doctor's office. They did a COVID and flu test that all came back negative. They did all the things listening to his lung and just assumed it was that weird virus that a few people have encountered of... Like it's not showing up on test, but you, it's just like a bad cold. So we kind of assumed that's what it was. They gave him a bunch of things, not antibiotics, just a bunch of things and kind of sent him on his way and was like, if he doesn't feel better by Monday, give them a call. He still wasn't getting better. Things were progressing. So Monday, we made him an appointment for Tuesday morning early with one of the doctors. And I went over there Monday. I had just been over there a few days before. And when I went over there Monday, guys, he looked literally like death. I've never seen him like this before. He's my kid that doesn't get sick. Like he hasn't been sick since he was six. He'll get a sniffle here and there, but like not real sickness, but he didn't have a fever. And I was like, we have an appointment in the morning, so it's fine. That night he called me saying that it was becoming very, very hard to breathe. And I'm sorry, I'm probably gonna cry through some of this because this whole experience has been really, really traumatizing. We took him to the emergency room. That is when they immediately said that he was septic and we found out that he had bacterial pneumonia in both lungs. And at this point, I knew it wasn't good. I knew it was bad. So they immediately started him on an antibiotic. The problem is this, is that everyone's sick right now and everyone needs a room and a bed and all of that. So they knew he was being admitted, obviously, but they couldn't find a room for him. So we were transferred to the children's hospital. Then the children's hospital was overfilled. So then they sent us to another hospital who finally took us in, but it was like 24 hours of my son, who's like 6'2", trying to sleep on this emergency room bed, and he was just super duper duper uncomfortable. And so they started him on antibiotics, and his stats would go up and down. He would get a fever, break a fever, get a fever, break a fever. His heart rate would be super high in like the 140s, 150s. Um, it should be 70 to 100 for those who don't know, or I think 60 to 100. His blood pressure would go up. It was just so up and down. Like one minute I was like, oh yeah, he's getting better because he's on antibiotics and I know it takes a few days, especially when you have like double pneumonia 
to get better. He had a really, really bad cough. That was expected, it's pneumonia. He was on oxygen, about a liter of oxygen, not very much, but his stats on Wednesday were 94 to 96%. So I was like, oh, that's looking good because the closer we got to 100, then they were gonna like try taking him off of oxygen. I was like, yes, yes, we're going somewhere. I don't think I realized how sick he was and he didn't realize how sick he was. In fact, when he got admitted to the emergency room, guys, like barely coherent, very weak, he's asking me if they were gonna let him go home in a few hours. And I was like, no, son, like, you're really sick. Like, really, really, really sick. I don't even know what happened. I can't even explain what happened. But later in the day, Wednesday, he stopped coughing. The cough wasn't that bad, which was amazing because he was in so much pain from coughing. But then he had it where, like, his O2 was fine, but, like, he couldn't breathe correctly. He sounded asthmatic. If you've ever had known anyone that's, like, wheezes and things like that, he sounded asthmatic, but, like, a breathing treatment wouldn't have helped him. It was so strange. Like he couldn't take a deep breath. He was breathing so fast. Every time he would get up to like go to the bathroom, do anything, his oxygen would drop into like the 70s. Lonnie and I were having to take shifts because he was so weak. Like we were having to help him like drink. I had let Lonnie take the first shift to sleep from about midnight to 4 a.m. Things just went downhill he started to get some anxiety about not being able to breathe correctly, which is understandable. Like he's never had any breathing issues in his life. And as someone who suddenly experienced shortness of breath after I had Penelope, it scared me and I was a grown woman. I can't imagine how scary that would be to a 16 year old boy who was just told he's septic and he had pneumonia in both lungs. Now he didn't fully understand what that meant, but he understood it was bad. And he understood that he was quickly declining and it was really scary. He started hyperventilating constantly. Like he literally spent like four to five hours hypoventilating. I'm gonna leave a lot out. I don't know how to explain it, but when you lose a lot of CO2, it causes a lot of symptoms and things to happen. And I had no idea what was going on because I kept telling them that something wasn't okay. I was like, he can't breathe. Like, he, I know his O2 is fine, but like, he's like struggling to breathe. Like, how long can this go on for? It happened so fast. A whole team like swarmed in, like you would see like on a movie or something. And they're like, we need to intubate him. And guys, when I say I thought my son was gone, like literally gone because I didn't understand what was going on. Like, I didn't know what was happening. And there's a lot more to this. Like, those first three days in the hospital were just the hardest ever. They came in and said we need to intubate him and I knew that wasn't good. What they said happened was gases were off or something. I don't understand any of this, but that's how they explain it. I didn't know what was going on. I thought that something had happened. Maybe he had been gone so long without oxygen or something. I, I didn't know because he just wasn't acting like himself. They're sending a culture of his lung off. Uh, they do believe that he's just been bleeding from his lungs, essentially. The antibiotics he was on were not working. When we got in the ER Monday night, 16.8 was his white blood count. It should be between five and nine. Five and nine is normal, but it was 16.8, which was to be expected. That wasn't weird but they put him on an antibiotic and it just kept climbing. We were just kind of waiting to see if it was gonna get better. When we checked in here, they did the white blood cell count on him and it was 25. So it went like 16, 20, 21.8, and then in 24 hour period, it went from 21.8 to 25. The antibiotics were not working anyway. He was just very sick. They said his lungs were just full. He is on the ventilator now they had him on a bunch of meds. He was on like two or three blood pressure medications because I guess when they get sedated, they have to do this. And a lot of things, guys, I've never been through this, so I'm just giving the update so you guys kind of know what happened. When they ended up sedating him and all of that, they were able to get his vitals under control, which was such a relief because when everything was going down, his vitals were so bad. His oxygen kept dropping down the 70s. His heart rate was going up to almost the 160s consistently. Like his heart rate stayed above 130 the entire time from Monday to Wednesday. Like it occasionally would go down a little bit, but I never saw his heart rate below 110. His blood pressure was like 210 over 105. So his vitals were just completely out of control. So I was happy to hear 
while we were waiting for them to intubate him, do everything they, they needed to do, that his vitals were stable because that was my biggest concern. I don't know a lot about medical stuff, but I do know having high blood pressure and a heart rate that high is it, it takes a wear on your heart. I think the scariest part for me was definitely just not knowing what this meant because again, at some point I thought he had brain damage. Like I was like, why is he acting like this? I finally asked, you know, the ICU charge nurse, you know, what happens next? And it wasn't until she went over everything and said, yeah. And then usually what happens a lot of times is after all of that, you get to go home. And that was the first time that I was like, I can still bring my son home. It's so crazy because now that I've had sleep, I'm telling you, like, my mind has blocked out a lot of what happened. Like, I have to really, really think about it. And I'm so thankful. I really hope that he does not remember any of what happened in the last 24 hours before he was, you know, sedated. I don't want him to remember. The doctor came and talked to us told us like, hey, we're gonna transfer him to a bigger hospital that has more resources. But he let me know that he was okay and he felt very, very confident that he was gonna make a full recovery. It was gonna be a long time, a long journey, all of that, but that he was going to be okay. And that's all that mattered to me. And it felt so good just to hear him say that. They transferred him to the ICU over here where we're at now, the bigger hospital. And they usually don't allow like visitors to stay overnight. The supervisor of the hospital came and talked to me and was like, this is something we normally don't allow, but we normally don't have 16 year olds on ventilator. So we will definitely make accommodations for you to be able to sleep in the room. And they have like, this is like a little futon. They've just been so accommodating. Everyone has been so sweet. They've taken such good care of him. So kind of where we're at now is he is only on one blood pressure med and that one they are slowly dropping, and slowly I mean like 0.1, like it'd be a little bit before he's off of that med. He is no longer on what is like an artery blood pressure monitor where it's like on the artery. Now it's just a blood pressure cuff, which is super exciting. He's responsive because Tuesday he had told me, he's like, mom, don't leave me no matter what happens. Just stay with me at all times, okay? And I told him I would. So when I got here, I, you know, I held his hand and I was like, mom's here. I kept my promise and he squeezed my hand back. And at first I thought it was a reflex, but the nurse later told me that he's there, he can hear us. That just warmed my heart. He did have a fever, but they were able to work through that. We are waiting on the lung culture to come back. It takes about one to two days, understandably. His heart rate though is literally right now, it is. 104 it was 95 earlier but 104 is still really good so his heart rate is that so it is lowering so he was on two antibiotics before obviously it wasn't working very well so they removed one and added a really 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 strong one i don't know what it is it starts with a z or an x and then the one they decided to keep from before they doubled the dosage. So they are being very aggressive, trying to get this infection under control. Obviously the culture is going to tell them a lot as well, but the most exciting part is they're going to try to take him off the ventilator this weekend. He's doing really good. He's very stable. His numbers are looking great. Now anxiety plays a big role into it. And I asked them not to be in the room when they take him off the ventilator. I don't even think I can be in the room, but I was like, I, I, I can't. Can't, I can't see that. I can't see that. It will just add further trauma to the trauma I've already experienced. Basically, if he struggles with waking up, they'll sedate him again and then try again the next day, but they'll just take it all off. Like, they won't worry about it because it's usually like waking up with all the tubes in you that's very, like, concerning spe specifically to young people like Lonnie. On Instagram, I am giving updates, Steph Joe 725 I don't know where the pneumonia came from. There is a possibility it could have came from surgery, like his wisdom to surgery. The culture will tell us more, but essentially that is the plan. Basically they will get him off the ventilator. He'll still be on oxygen. Once he is stable and no longer needs the support of the ventilator at all, then they will move us to the main hospital floor where he will finish his hospital recovery and then after all that, then we will be set home and we will finish his recovery there. He will be going to my house.
and staying at my house. A lot of you have asked how you can support my family. Now, of course, watching ads on our, our channel is a great way if you're like, I can't give you anything. And even if you just don't want, like, you guys aren't obligated to. Obviously, Lonnie and I are taking off from work. This is our priority now. Lonnie is our priority now. But I still have bills. I still have kids at home that I have to feed and all of those. But regardless, we're going to figure it out. This is our responsibility. I'm not over here going to rely on social media to pay our bills and things like that. But for those who were like, hey, how can we support you? I will leave my store information below as Danielle is still managing it. If you are just wanting to help us out financially, a lot of you guys have asked for Cash App, Venmo, all of that. I don't have Venmo, but I will leave my Cash App and my PayPal below. I realize it is not our landing crew stuff, it's our business stuff. I just don't have the time or energy to create new stuff. If you are not spiritual, you don't believe in spirituality, please do not use this video to tell me how wrong I am. It's okay if we have different beliefs. All of his medical bills are being covered and any extra money that does not get allocated to food and bills and just kind of surviving while he's getting better will then be put towards a like get well gift for Lonnie Jr. as I am hoping to do some things. Thank you for the love and support. Um, I do appreciate you guys. I will try to update on Instagram as much as I can. I think like once he wakes up I probably won't be updating as much obviously like right now I'm just kind of like staring at his vitals all day like get better get better this has been an experience that no parent should ever have to go through it definitely made me think of a few things like the parents whose children aren't gonna get better that feeling i felt like i'm being honest when i say i thought he was gone like i thought he was gone and a million things rushed through my head and then i also thought about during covid when we were all running out of ventilators and what that would have looked like like, I had just so many things, like this whole experience has changed so much for me. It's also made me, like, feel, make each day count. My first thought was just imagining me picking Lonnie Jr. up from school. And I was like, I'm never going to get to do that again. I'm never going to see him walk to my car again. And that just <laughs> broke my heart. His school, by the way, has been amazing. Like, I reached out to them. One of his teachers literally told me to tell him that he's been such an amazing student that he doesn't have to do anything <laughs> except take finals at the end of this year. And that was before he he got put into the ICU. That was just when he was really, really sick. He just wanted him to focus on getting better and he just thought Lonnie was the best student ever. Huh, okay. I'm trying to like go through the emotions but not get overly emotional because once I start thinking about everything, I get really upset and I only want positive vibes. So we will see you guys when we see you guys. Where you move, make me blind. You will always be there. There's no doubt in my mind. You will always be there.